This is Pastor Derek Thomas of Living Witness Ministries, and I want to welcome you to the Living Word Podcast. I pray that today's teaching blesses you, inspires you, and encourages you to live a life worthy of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that we serve. God bless. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like a vision and I saw a horse I'd never seen it before it was like translucent but there was fire coming out from inside of it and the fire was licking up around the sides of the horse and the whole horse was made of fire and then as I looked at this horse the vision pulled out and I saw that it was pulling a chariot as in Elijah surrounded by horses and chariots of fire come on release it right now in the name of Jesus, go, you fiery chariots and horses. Battle the enemy in the name of Jesus. Allow the angelic realm to come and minister in the name of Jesus right now. Shout, people of God, shout.
Our text today is found in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses 1 through 8, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version of God's Holy Word today. And what you find written there reads in this fashion, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up and a time to kill, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. As we speak this morning to the subject, it's time, amen, it's time. When I watch TV, I'm a fan of sports, and you've heard me talk about this on more than one occasion, and one of the types of sports that I like is contact sports. I like MMA. I like boxing. I like wrestling. And there's one thing about MMA. The MMA is, is and it's true with boxing as well, it's all about hype. And the hype is what gets you excited. And the hype is what gets you worked up into a frenzy for the fight. And one person that does it better than anybody else is Bruce Buffer. Now, Bruce Buffer's made a fortune by uttering two words that have generated excitement and anticipation in millions of fight fans, including myself, around the world. Uh, you can be watching a fight, I can be watching a pay-per-view, and, and no matter how good the undercard is, and, and, and I tune in, but I don't tune in for the undercard, I tune in for the main event. When it's main event, uh, when it's main event time after Bruce Buffett introduces everybody, he says something to the effect of, for the, the thousands in attendance and the millions in the world, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and he utters two words, it's time. And when you hear those words, it's time, it, 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 it ignites something in you. It ignites something in me. It makes me even more anticipatory of what's coming. And, and our text here, what Solomon is doing is he's trying to do the same thing. He's trying to ignite something in us. We have to understand in this in this time that we're in. This is warfare. This is time. This is a time that we have to fight. We have to do the work of ministry that God has given us to do. And in the midst of this series of this means war, God is showing us not only strategies and not only concepts, but now He's showing us what what it feels like at, at, at fight night. This this is fight night now. This is when we're on the battlefield. This is for me when I was in sports. When I was in the starting blocks and I was in the Set position because when I hit the set position, I know that there was only one thing for me to do, and that's go. And many of us as believers are finding ourselves in a position where we're not quite ready to go. We feel like we're in that on your mark position or in that set position, but we're afraid to go. We're afraid to pull the trigger. And, and God is letting us know today that we've got to understand that this is the season and that for us to go. We have to understand the season that we're in, and we have to understand that our function and our job is to win souls for the kingdom right now. This is not a tomorrow proposition. This is not a next week proposition. This is not an I'll get to it proposition. This is a right now proposition. When we turn on the TV or look at the news or even step outside of our front door and fellowship with brothers and sisters in our community and day-to-day -day activity. We see and hear more than ever before that darkness is trying to consume the light and darkness is trying to consume the minds and hearts of people and God is saying that it's warfare right now and you've seen all the preliminary stuff that's happening. We've had all the different moves. We had the Azusa revival. We've had the, the Pensacola outpouring, but it's time, church. It's time for us to strap up our spiritual boots. It's time for us to put on our breastplate of righteousness. It's time for us to put on the helmet of salvation. It's time for us to put on the full armor of God and get out there and fight the good fight of faith. And you may say, well, preacher, how do I do that? Well, we win souls for the kingdom through First and foremost, maximizing every moment. Amen. We have to maximize every opportunity we have. We have to never miss a genuine opportunity to do the work of ministry. Now, in our text here, Solomon defines the parameters of our battlefield. In every war, there's a theater, and that theater exists in which the battles that are fought and battles that are fought rage. And they define the territory gained or lost in the battle. 
Now, for us as believers, our theater of war is the earth and the battles that we fight are spiritual in nature with the souls of our brothers and sisters ultimately at stake. We've got to understand that every time we walk out the door, God desires to use us to make a difference in somebody's life. Every time we walk out the door, God wants us to have a word ready in our mouth. That's why the word tells us to, to preach the word, to be instant, in season and out of season. Yet so many of us walk around think that in, 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 a, in, a, in a spiritual fog, in an oblivion, thinking that there's nothing for us to do. And the battle is real, church. We've got to understand and realize that because this battle is real, we've got to be about our father's business every day. I watch pro wrestling and there's a championship that that people minimize and, and people laugh at. But as I'm getting older and as I'm getting more mature, as it pertains to the word and the things of God, I'm starting to realize that, that it's, it's critical because it's the mindset that we have to be in. And that's a 24-7 title. And the premise behind the 24-7 title is that at any point in time, a challenger could pop up. And at any point in time, you could be challenged for that title. And at any point in time, you could lose that title, which means you have to be steadfast and movable and always abounding in the work of being that champion. And the word speaks about that as us. We're God's champions and we've got to be steadfast, immovable, and ever bounding in the work of ministry and preaching and teaching the word so that we can make a difference in the lives of others. Now, not only does God establish the standard and withhold and dispense satisfaction in warfare, but our text shows us that he also appoints seasons and times. And what that means for us as believers is that he is a director in our theater of war and our instructions for our actions come from him. If you've ever been involved in a play or a production, you know that the director has the final say. The director tells you where you stand. The director tells you where to sit. The director tells you when to speak. The director tells you how to emote. The director gives you all the cues that you need to see the masterwork be all that it can be because the director is the one that sees the whole production, not just your part, but the whole production. God sees the whole production and he needs and wants us to understand that it's our responsibility to be faithful and obedient to him. And oftentimes we want to go rogue and go on our own and do our own thing. And we can't do that because we've said in messages past in the series that when you disobey commands as a soldier in the army, that's when people die. And God does not want anyone to die. The Bible says that he desires that none should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. And it's our job to do all that we can to lead souls to the kingdom, not turn them away from the kingdom. So we've got to listen to the director. We've got to listen to the father and, and be all that he's called us to be to make a difference in the lives of others. Therefore, we must understand, church, that it's time for us to become serious actors in God's production of kingdom building. It's not time for us to be a standby. It's not time for us to be an extra. It's time for us to star in the feature film, star in our own standalone as it pertains to the work of ministry so that when God brings us together in one compilation, in one group masterpiece, we've done our part and we stand alone as a victor. Ecclesiastes 2.26 puts it this way. For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may give to him who is good before God. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind. We've got to understand that God has called us to not be an undercard. This is not an undercard affair. This is a main event and God needs us ready. He needs us strapped up. He needs us squared up. He needs us prayed up. He needs us worded up. He needs us anointed up. He needs us up and ready to do the work of ministry because it's battle. And we've got to understand there's a saying in war that war is hell. We've got to understand that we're warring to keep people out of hell. And the war is real. It's 24-7. It's ongoing at all times. So not only must we understand and maximize every moment that we have, but secondly, we've got to demonstrate excellence in our execution. Amen. We've got to demonstrate true excellence in our execution. Half stepping to 50% ain't going to cut it. 99% ain't going to cut it no more. God needs us at 100% and beyond. Now, in our text here, Solomon illuminates the art of war. Now, like a painter's masterpiece, the art of war is a strategy that's used by an army to color in the lines that the parameter that's set by the theater of war establishes. 
in order to bring into focus the portrait of victory being sought. Now, for us as believers, that strategy is housed in our ability to become exceptionally proficient in the work of ministry that we've been called to execute in this season of spiritual warfare. We've got to become masters at something. You hear the story, you hear the saying, a jack of all trades, master of none. God is saying it's time out for that. I need you to master the craft that I've given you. I've given you the measure of faith and I've given you the measure of faith in order to exercise that faith to be the master of all that's being done, to be the victor in all that you do. And you've got to understand that everything that you do, you do it to the full. Everything that you do, you do it to the nth degree. Everything that you do, you do it for the master's use and for the master's victory. And we've got to understand here that while earthly pursuits are good in their proper place and time, God is showing us that they're unprofitable when pursued, when, when pursued as our chief goal. And they'll lead us to, to be inefficient in our service to the kingdom. Because they're self-centered instead of God-centered. God needs us to be focused on him. Our mind, our heart, our spirit, our essence, everything has to be focused on him because the word says that it's in him that we live and that we move and that we have our being. And God is calling us more than ever before to live, move and have our being in him because it's through Christ that we can do all things. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Apart from God, we can do nothing, but there's nothing that's impossible to us through God. And we have to do it through God, not in spite of God. When it's time to do the thing God's way, we understand and realize that God's not wanting just a little bit from us. God's wanting everything that we have because in giving everything that we have, the excellence that he desires to pour into us, we're emptied of ourselves. We're void of anything else so he can fill us with the essence of who he is so we can walk and function in the excellence that comes with doing things his way. This is why we have to realize that it's time to give God the very best of our service as soldiers in his army. A soldier gives his very best for his commanding officer at all times. A soldier can't be a slacker because when you're slacker, the, the, the commanding officer will say, stop and give me 10. Stop and give me 50. Stop and give me 100. Why is he doing that? Not only is he doing it to punish you, but he's also doing it to build you up so that you'll be stronger so the next time you face that thing, you can face that thing knowing that you have more than enough in the way of instinct, more than enough in the way of ability and capability and strength to do what it is that you're called to do. James puts it this way in the first chapter, verses 19 through 21. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the, the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. We've got to understand that we've got to function in excellence and excellence is doing it God's way. God's way is not being quick to speak, but being slow to speak, being being swift to hear, being, being slow to anger, doing it his way and trusting God to do it. And it's time for us to realize and understand that God is in control and it's time for us to demonstrate that excellence because the enemy is coming full bore after us and every victory that we earn people have to know about it every skirmish that we face in this theater of war there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser we've already won the war we have to um, we, all we got to do is look in the world and see that we won which leads us to our last point every victory we have we've got to lift the banner of christ in every victory that we have so that people can see that we're making progress so that people can see that we're progressing and advancing in in in, in warfare in world war ii one of the most famous most one of the most famous erections of uh, a banner of the united states banner was at Iwo jima a statue has been built of it because in Iwo jima that showed that we're making progress in the island hopping to get to tokyo that we were making progress in island hopping to get to the capital to end this war now, in our text here, Solomon is speaking lastly of the spoils of war. Solomon continues his defense of his labors in this piece of text here in the flesh by suggesting that there must be some profit in, see in seeking to establish stability in one's life. Now, there's much in the world that is changing, and Solomon here is trusting in things that he thinks have provided him with security. Now, what he discovers in that is that there's one who keeps the world in order, and that one church is God. He's the one who causes all things that happen in the seasons and gives everything a purpose. It's about God that we do this thing. The battle is not ours, it's the Lord's, because as we battle and seek to do this thing God's 
God's way. We might win a skirmish here. We might lose a skirmish here. But in winning the battle, we've got to plant our flag so that people can see that we're advancing for the kingdom. We're making advancements and strides for the kingdom. God is moving in this season and he needs us as soldiers to be bold in our witness and bold in our proclamation that we've won this territory. Now, like Solomon, we as believers have to identify and lift up the spoils of revelation, knowledge, and God in the midst of our warfare through our witness of God's goodness grace and provision as he allows us to achieve victory in the battles that we face, realizing that our testimony of these victories is the key church that unlocks the hearts of those that are lost to receive the salvation that comes through Christ. We've got to understand that like Iwo Jima, we've got to boldly plant that flag in that testimony, plant that fat flag in that victory, plant that flag in that overcoming, plant that flag in that deliverance, plant that flag in that soul being one. We've got to plant that flag so that people can see that there's something to this thing called salvation, that as we continue to be bold living witnesses, we can win souls for the kingdom. The Bible lets us know that he who wins souls is wise. So we must redeem our time by using it to win souls for the kingdom through our living witness. Because as I close, the word lets us know that we have to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And we have to redeem our time because the days are evil. Church, it's time for us to be serious about God's business. And it's time for us to do God's will, God's way, in order to make a difference in the lives of others. God bless. I pray that you were blessed by today's word. The Bible tells us that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, that we would be saved. If you've never taken the opportunity to do either one of those things, won't you join me now in prayer? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come before you a sinner. I believe that you sent your son to die that I might live. I believe that he lived, died, rose again, ascended to heaven, and is coming back for sinners just like me. I confess my sin. I ask you into my heart, and I ask you into my life. Thank you, Lord, that by faith I am now saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I'd like to welcome you into the household of faith and into a loving relationship of salvation with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please email me and let me know of your experience or if you have any prayer requests or praise reports, please email me. The email address is livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's living, the number two, witness at gmail.com. Until next time. This is Pastor Derek Thomas, encouraging you to live your life as a living witness.